Hello, how are you doing? My name is Otto and welcome back to the channel. This is the DJI RS3 Mini and this is an easy to follow video tutorial to learn how to use it and how to balance a camera. This video is going to be a little bit long so let's get into it. The first step to do is to place the tripod in the lower part of the gimbal. Now charge the device using the supplied USB-C cable using any power brick that you have. Using a 10 watt charger, the gimbal will charge in about 2.5 hours. When the battery is charging, you will see a battery icon charging, and when the gimbal is fully charged, the screen will turn off. When the gimbal is off, you can check the battery level by quickly pressing the power button. Before you balance the camera on the gimbal, attach the included quick release plate to the camera. You also need to remove the lens cap and set anything else that you need on the camera. For example, the screen position should be ready and any ND filters that you want to use should be in place. Now, you need to unfold the gimbal. Unlock the row axis over here, move the arm to this position and lock the arm again. Now, unlock the tilt axis over here, move the arm to this position and lock the arm again. Make sure that this lever is all the way to the back and slide the camera backwards and push it all the way in. Now lock the camera in position by moving the lever to the lock position like this. To remove the camera, pull the lock lever to the back and press this safety pin and slide the camera forward at the same time. If you need to move this plate to fit your camera, you can unlock the red lever and move the plate to the left or the right and then use the red lever again to lock it. Okay, so the easy way to balance the camera is to start with the tilt axis. You need to unlock it and now we're going to point the camera upward. And we want the camera to stay in this position, so we are going to unlock this lever and we're going to move the plate forward or backward until the camera stays in this position that we want. And when it's done, lock the lever again. Next, point the camera forward. And if it's not balanced, we'll need to unlock the arm with this lever. Move the camera forward or backward until the camera is balanced pointing forward. When it's ready, lock the arm again with the lever. Now we're going to unlock the row axis and we need to balance this so it stays in this position. Unlock the arm with this lever and move it to the right or to the left until the camera stays on a horizontal position. When you're done, lock the arm with the lever again. For the last step, it's a good idea to lock the axis that were already balanced. Now unlock the pan axis and we're going to move the gimbal to the side like this. We want this arm to stay like this without moving to any side. So we are going to unlock this arm with this lever and move the arm forward or backward until we have the right balance. When you're done, move the lever to the lock position. To turn the gimbal on or off, press and hold the power button for 3 seconds. If this is the first time using this gimbal, you will need to download the DJI Ronin app. Open the app and you need to agree to their terms and conditions. Now connect the gimbal to the app. You will need to input the password which is the one that you have on the screen right now. Select to update the firmware of your gimbal here and wait until this process finishes. This will take about 5 minutes and after that you will need to activate the gimbal. For that, you need to register if you don't have an account with DJI. Now, log in with your email and password and right after you do so, it will finish the activation process. On the left side of the gimbal, you will find this NATO port that you can use for different kind of accessories. For this gimbal, one of the most useful ones is this extension to use the gimbal in a horizontal position. In the front of the gimbal, we have this dial, and this will let you change some of the settings on the camera 
or move any axis of the gimbal that you select in the settings. Below the dial, we have a trigger. Press and hold it to enter lock mode. This mode is useful when you don't want the gimbal to move in any direction. For example, if you're walking in a straight line. If you want to stay in lock mode without holding the trigger, you can tap on the screen down here, and now you can release the trigger. To exit lock mode, tap down here on the screen. If you press the trigger twice, it will recenter the gimbal. And if you press the trigger three times, the camera will rotate 180 degrees. To rotate back to point forward, tap the trigger twice. So apparently, there is no recenter in selfie mode, which seems more like a mistake than a regular feature. In the back of the gimbal, we have a joystick that will move the camera around. The M button will let you select a user profile. You can have three different ones, and whatever setting you change or use will stay on the profile that you're using at that moment. If you press and hold the M button, the gimbal will enter a sport mode, and this will make the gimbal react faster to your movements. To stay in a sport mode without having to hold the M button, press and hold the M button and press the trigger twice. To exit the sport mode, press and hold the M button and double tap the trigger at the same time. The red button is the shutter button. If you press it halfway, it will autofocus. If you press it once, it will start or stop recording. And if you press and hold the button, it will take a picture. Remember that for this button to work, you need to connect the USB cable from the gimbal to your camera or connect both devices via Bluetooth. Okay, let's take a look at the different options that you get on the screen. Every time that you use a new camera setup, I highly recommend to press this icon on the screen. This will perform an automatic calibration for the gimbal and adjust the stiffness of all three axes. Do this on a flat surface and do not move the gimbal during this process. If you want to manually adjust the stiffness of any axis, you can change the values here. The higher the number, the stiffer it will get. Once you are inside of any submenu, you can press this left arrow to go back to the previous menu. This icon over here will indicate the balance status. Green means that the gimbal is correctly balanced. Orange means that the gimbal is slightly unbalanced. And if it's red, it means that it's not well balanced. If you press the icon, you will be able to see which axis is the one that is not balanced correctly. With this information, I recommend to turn off the gimbal and fix the axis that is not balanced. At the lower left side of the screen, you can select the gimbal follow mode. PF is pan follow, and here, the pan axis will follow your movement, but the roll and the tilt axis will be locked. This mode is useful for panning movements or to orbit around something or someone. PTF is pan and tilt follow, and here the pan and tilt axis are going to follow your movement. FPV or POV as we know it is where all three axes will follow your movements. The roll, the tilt, the panning, they are all going to be unlocked. The next option is custom and you can customize which axis you want to lock or unlock. We can set here for example this combination where all axes are disabled which is basically the lock mode. Below custom you can select this option called 3D Roll 360 and this is the inception mode where the gimbal will spin around to make this kind of effect. Once you select this follow mode you need to position the gimbal in a horizontal position. Press record and spin the gimbal clockwise or counterclockwise by pushing the joystick to the right or to the left. The last option in the main screen is the follow speed. This is how fast your gimbal will follow your movements and here you can select the slow, medium or fast or you can also select custom to select a more precise speed. If you swipe down from the main screen, you will get these four options. At the top left, this will lock the screen. 
and to unlock the screen, you need to swipe up from the bottom of the screen. At the top right, this icon will start the connection to your camera via Bluetooth. Airplane mode should be off in your camera and Bluetooth should be set to on. At the bottom left, this icon will mute any sounds or alerts from the gimbal. And at the bottom right, this icon will let you change a few settings. Disable selfie will prevent the gimbal to go into selfie mode if you trigger this by accident. Orbit follow will make the gimbal move smoother when you're doing any kind of orbit shots. Push mode will let you move the camera manually on the tilt or pan axis, where normally you can't do this because the gimbal will try to get back to the original position. Horizon calibration can be used if the horizon of the gimbal is not correctly leveled. If this doesn't work, you can manually adjust the level angle by dragging this bar to the left or the right or use these two buttons to create micro adjustments. If you swipe up from the main screen, you will enter this other menu where you can change the gimbal settings. At the top left, this will let you adjust the speed of the joystick. You can select slow, medium or fast or you can select this to customize the speed. At the top right, you can control how smooth the gimbal will move when you use the joystick. You can select high, medium, or low, or you can customize this setting as well. Notice that on high, the gimbal will continue to drift a bit when I release the joystick. If I select low, the gimbal will stop almost right away after I release the joystick. For this setting, I recommend to use medium for most cases. At the lower left, we can set the function of the front dial. Some of this will require you to connect the gimbal to the camera with the cable or via Bluetooth, such as the focus, zoom, ISO, aperture, and the shutter speed. You can also select the dial to be able to control the roll, the pan, or the tilt, and these options don't need any connection between the camera and the gimbal. The last option at the lower right corner will let you set the dial speed, which is how fast the dial will respond to change any given setting. The dial smoothness will determine how sensitive it is, and down here you can reverse the dial direction. To take low angle shots, we are going to be using under long mode, and to do so on this gimbal, we are going to flip the gimbal upside down like this. If you found this useful, please give this video a like. I hope you have an amazing day or night, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.